just so prepared right now. There. I've never tried this before, but I was reading somebody on a Mazda RX-7 forum said they had a warped intake and they were able to sand it down flat. So I'm going to try this out. I've never done this before, so let's see how this turns out.
Yeah, the center point is what's kind of high. Most of the scratches are there. It looks pretty bad, but I can't really feel it. And I have a sheet of 400 grit. I'm going to do after I get this more level to smooth it out. I should tape this to the floor or something. <laughs> wow, this is the best tape in the world. Ooh, that is noticeably better. It's doing something. In addition to the sanding I did on the intake, this was the next step that they listed on the forum. After sanding, there's going to be a lot of little scratches that could leak air. And this stuff is supposed to fill in tiny scratches so that they won't leak. And I've never used this stuff before, but this will be a good test for it. I'm going to do a smoke test again after I put everything back together. We'll see how well this does. I'm um, not sure if it'll work for cooling. It says it works on head gaskets. So we'll see if it leaks uh, coolant at all.
So after putting in the new intake gasket and reinstalling everything, a check engine light came on during the first startup of the Saab. I'm going to check the codes that came up. Sadly, I can't use my good old OBD2 scanner like all my other cars I have. This is a luxury I, I don't get with the Saab. So let me pull out my OBD1 scan tool. Okay, ready to go. Okay, this looks pretty bad considering how I thought I could only store five codes at a time. But I'm gonna go through the list that's in the that's in the Bentley manual. I'm gonna go over the codes and see which ones I need to worry about and which ones I don't. Hopefully this list will get much smaller. Okay, I had to go through and pull the codes again because there was something weird about that first list I got. Most of them didn't even line up with what the book had. So I went through and I pulled the codes again. And these ones look a little better. One, two, two, three, one. If you pull check engine light codes from a sub with the engine off, you're going to get this code. So this one should be alright to ignore. One, two, two, four, two. That one is interesting because air mass meter burn off function fault. If you remember in one of my other videos, I had to replace the, the mass airflow sensor with a knockoff Chinese brand one, and it doesn't have that function, so this is going to be tripping every time. So I'm just going to have a check engine light until I get an actual Bosch mass airflow sensor, which uh, unless I get lucky, I'm going to be keeping this knockoff one because Bosch ones are not cheap. And one, two, one, one, two. I think I had this code in my very first video, but something wrong with the oxygen sensor circuit. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm guessing one, two, 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 four, which isn't in the book, but one two 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 five is, which I might have just wrote the number wrong, which is also an oxygen sensor code. So there's probably something wrong with my oxygen sensor circuit. I'll probably look into that maybe in the next video. I'm, I'm, I think this one's already getting pretty long, so I'm just going to end it here. And I'll do all this O2 sensor testing for the next one. Griff, are you in my chair? I need to edit my video. I have videos to edit, Griff.